Your Majesty, the winners of the prize uh, and great researchers, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a privilege to be here today. I've come to this, to this uh, event now the last three years and it has only grown my interest in the area and humbled me in terms of what we don't know, but also frustrated me in terms of sometimes how simple the solutions are and yet how long we have to go to achieve what we need to achieve. So I'd like to begin with a fact, and that fact is that diarrheal disease, largely derived, as you've heard already today, from con contaminated water and inadequate sanitation, accounts for 1,600 deaths daily in India. The same as if we had eight, 200 people jumbo jets crash. And you know how much news a jumbo jet that crashes maybe once in the whole year gets. But we have this equivalent going down every day to diarrhea. It's the third leading cause of childhood mortality in India, and it's responsible for 13% of all deaths in children under five years of age. So this needs a solution. Now, the worst of it is that di diarrhea is treatable and preventable. And it isn't just India. Globally, it's estimated that two and a half billion people lack access to improved sanitation, which is more than 35% of the world's population. So India today is at a very interesting point in its history. It is absolutely the first time in our last years since independence that the Prime Minister used his Independence Day speech from the ramparts at the red, of the Red Fort to announce a program on sanitation and committed to sanitation. And therefore, not just the announcement, but the entire government, all departments, and indeed civil society, now increasingly the private sector and corporates, and the many bilaterals and multilateral and donor agencies that have engaged in various ways are indeed coming together. And it is to help this coming together that some of us set up the India Sanitation Coalition, a platform to engage, to ensure collaboration. And it's very easy to say collaboration and partnership is something that should be. You'd be surprised how difficult it is when you get down to it, because the in various partners, and I think events like this help because they bring us all together, but otherwise, you will, as we indeed had in India, four not-for-profits working in the same district in Bihar. One doesn't know what the other is doing. Each is reinventing the wheel. And then, if you begin to look at the way the not-for-profit community engages with the private sector, or indeed with government, you begin to see that that dissonance can be quite destructive. So bringing it together is important. Documenting best practice or good practice is important. And that is what we have resolved to do and indeed have already put up on a website which went alive just actually last week. And the purpose of this is to bring everyone together so that two plus two can equal 10. In doing that, and yes, as a banker, I should know how two plus two equals 10. So in doing that, what we are creating is a platform for opportunity, for social entrepreneurs who want to work in the space to come forward and get funded, for projects to come forward so that corporates who are interested in funding but don't know how can find it. And it's as much about the for-profit activity in sanitation as it is for the not-for-profit activity, because we need both. We need a vibrant private sector that makes money providing equipment. We need social entrepreneurs and service providers at the grassroots who deliver products, and very simple products sometimes. In fact, it was right here at CV two years ago that I learned of how there were 10 millionaires in Kampala who were millionaires from dealing in shit. So it's not such a shitty business. 
it works. Yeah? And it was such a simple model of people who were going in to homes, often homes in slums or in low-cost housing, and removing these cans which were provided all in a very scientific way, all about gloves, masks, color-coded, uh, and would carry these cans away every day to a factory which treated this to fertilizer which was good enough to be used for cotton crop. And it is this virtuous solution that enabled what were basically handlers of shit to become millionaires in their own right. So it is these very simple solutions sometimes that can help us. We have our own examples right now in the slums of Bombay where these women are indeed millionaires from doing a slightly different model than I've described, but they run the community toilets in the slum and they have made that a business. So we need more of these solutions which are sustainable. We need to study what is working everywhere in the world, import it, adapt it, and make it work. And that's really what the purpose of the Sanitation Coalition is about. So India faces a huge sanitation challenge. About half the country still defecates in the open. And many households, indeed, don't have the technology for manage, managing this in any appropriate way. And even worse, it begins to contaminate our water bodies, which are scarce, and groundwater, which is also a source of uh, water. Over 13,000, uh, 130,000 tons of human waste is generated every day. Now, the problem, therefore, of water pollution is also rife. That about a third only of India's wastewater is actually treated. And the rest flows, and in fact, even the treated water flows into rivers, canals, groundwater. And this is quite apart from industrial waste, which also, of course, contributes to the effluent and issues therein. Uh, so India has tightened up considerably on its industrial effluent control. Uh, I do think we have a long way to go in the implementation. The regulations are there. But even as we look at this, the whole area of human waste also deserves a lot more action. So, as you heard, there is a renewed buzz in the country. And if we get it wrong over the next two to three years, if this government falls flat on its face, having stuck its neck out the way it has, I think we would have reversed a tremendous, tremendous moment in history when we could, in fact, have really moved the needle considerably on a very, very critical area. A critical area for India, a critical area for the world, because as you saw up there, these pathogens, uh, these diseases travel, and they travel very quickly. The good news is that in a survey which was done just recently on two years of uh, the Modi government in India, and citizens were asked, which of the government's plans do you like best? And the Swachh Bharat mission, which is the Clean India Movement, was right up there. It has caught the interest and fascination of Indian citizens. We are the closest we will ever be to making this into a people's movement. We need a people's movement because this is not just about provision of toilets. And toilets are being provided in a huge way. And just over the last uh, two years, we've seen over 30 million toilets built in the country. But it's all about the use, the maintenance, and the treatment as well. And for that, we need civil society, we need technology, we need innovation, we need people to respond and do the right thing. And that is why having this as a people's movement becomes very, very important. Now, to engage in this in terms of planning, uh, clearly, it's not enough to just bring people together. We need programs. There's a huge outreach happening by government for behavior change through media. But we also need to sensitize media. And this can sometimes be quite difficult because reporting on shit is no fun. We need media 
to come in there and understand the issues and to actually be able to very intelligently put out the messaging as we need it. The other aspect which uh, is requiring attention is the technologies. We cannot just import the technologies of the West. Big pipes, big systems are very expensive and it will take a long time before we can establish these large sewage clearing mechanisms as the Western world has got used to. The answer, and particularly getting it to some of the smaller hamlets, villages, even slums, uh, requires distributed sewage facilities. And countries have done it. I believe Indonesia has over 17,000 of these. Even New York, I've learned by being here over the last two days uh, in Long Island and places, has these distributed sewage facilities. They exist, they need to be documented. We need to ensure that we can learn from the mistakes, but bring the best of these technologies into countries such as ours, because the solution will lie in big systems and small systems working uh, together. We've also used faith-based uh, uh, organizations a fair bit. In India, the whole area of cleaning of toilets tends to get buried into caste and is seen as a very low-income uh, business. However, to change this outlook, uh, enabling people to make money from the business, as I alluded to earlier, but also to change the perspective, can sometimes require very simple innovations. And what happened recently was uh, some of our gurus sat with those that cleaned the toilets and at a very big holy event uh, uh, along the Ganges, and, which is called the Kumbh Mela, in fact, and they ate together. The signal to India that this is not a job for others, this is a job for all of us. We, it is part of our religion to be clean and keep things clean. So sometimes these sort of very, what I've actually took a long time to get to, send very, very important messages. And faith-based organizations are playing a very key role in some of the mindset changes that are needing to happen. Now, we do, at the India Sanitation Coalition, come across multiple players with varied strengths, but there's never enough. Uh, we have many not-for-profits working in the space, but they need to be scaled up doing more. We have much money already in the system, but we need more. We need more innovators. We need the social entrepreneurs who come with small solutions which can go a big way in the small hamlets and villages which uh, uh, populate India. We can learn from countries like Bangladesh, who have led in terms of CLTS, which is the community-led formats for uh, uh, total sanitation. And without communities, I don't believe we can go anywhere. Some of the best projects that have worked are those where you got a strong proponent from government, which was typically a grassroots government district collector or at that level. But the community embraced the cause, the community ensured accountability, the community understood why they were doing it, and unless the community signs up to be open defecation free, it's not going to happen. The opportunity. There's trillions of dollars going to be spent in building these systems. So the opportunity for big and small companies, for supplies of goods and services, is huge. And it is therefore, to my mind, a wake-up call for all of us, one which not just we in India participate in, but I hope we can bring all of you with your various strengths to work with us so that we can make a truly clean India. Thank you. Thank you.